Thank you for joining us online today. Here at House of the Lord, we love to hear about what God is doing in the lives of His people. So if you have a testimony that you'd like to share with us, please email it to amen at hotl.church. If this house has impacted you in any way and you would love to partner with us financially, you can visit our website at hotl.church and click on the upper right to give, or you can text an amount to 84321. Thank you. We hope you enjoy the message and have a great day. Somebody say rooted. Rooted. Come on, you got to say it like rooted. You know, I'm rooted. It's awesome. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted by the water. Somebody say planted. I'm going to pull Pastor Joel on you. This, room, this, this side of the room is, is, is noisier than this side. I need to hear a planted. That was better. Thank you, Joel. All right. He is like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green, and it's not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. So this is a series that God put on our heart as a preaching team last year, uh, entitled Roots, entitled Rooted. And listen, can I just say this? Everyone has some sort of a root system. It's like theologians. It's like some people will say, well, I'm not a theologian. Yes, you are. You're either a good one or a bad one. Right? Everybody's got a root system, and they're either deep or they're shallow. Come on, let's just be honest this morning. I ca- an article I came across recently in a gardening magazine, and I'm trying to learn, right? Was entitled, Watch Out for Shallow Roots. It explained that deep-rooted trees were more consistent, were safer for gardens and lawns. And here's what it said for shallow-rooted trees. Other trees, on the contrary, have either dense root systems or mostly superficial roots that quickly create havoc. Drying out the soil, depleting its minerals, making any type of gardening difficult. And many of these same trees will cause further damage by lifting the tiles of your patio, cracking, and raising cement walkways, rendering the surface of your paths and trails so uneven you can scarcely walk on them without tripping. That's kind of crazy. In years of leading a church, I'd say that deep-rooted, planted people are the most consistent stable, able to stand through the storms of anything people I've seen. They stand through loss. They stand through change. They stand through fire. They stand through disappointment. They stand through, uh, you know, through the death of a loved one. They, they stand through, you know, uh, the, the fracturing of, of families. They, they, they just stand because there's a root system there. The strength of a tree is in its roots. I've also seen shallow-rooted people bend, break, bow. They're blown away by the storms that come culturally, financially, and relationally. They're easily distracted. They're easily derailed. They're easily offended. And they are equal opportunity offenders. I'm going to get real today. You will be drained... Or trip more on shallow-rooted people in life than deep-rooted by far. The shallow-rooted tree is the most dangerous tree in the storm. Think about that. How many of you got trees around here? Uh, how, How many of you, when the wind blows, every once in a while, we got these like these winds that blow, and I'm looking at my trees, and I'm going, I'm proclaiming healthy tree, healthy tree, healthy tree, healthy tree. You know what? Because it's the disease tree, the shallow rooted trees that you actually go, okay, Jesus, I don't want that falling on my house or my shop. I had a tree last year in a windstorm fall on my shop. I thought I made it unscathed through the storm. Uh, the neighbor called me and said, hey, you just had a tree fall in your driveway. I'm like, okay, cool. She said, I, it's, it's not very big. I think I can drag it out. Like, oh, she is awesome. <laughs> and then basically she called me again or texted us again and said, hey, you just had a, a tree fall down your driveway. I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, and it was a shallow rooted, big, you know, big tree. And then I'm in my shop and basically I'm hearing the wind blow and I'm in in my shop and I hear this tree basically break 
And I'm like, I think it's going to come down on the shop. I dove under my pickup because it was a Chevrolet. (laughs) I didn't even write that one down. This stuff just comes to me. Just like, boom, in the moment. (laughs) Sorry, Sorry, Pastor John. (laughs) He's a Ford man. (laughs) Anyway, the tree that fell was one that basically was not healthy. It didn't have healthy roots. Listen, the fruit in our life reveals the condition and depth of fruit in our life. The fruit in our life, the roots, the fruit in our life reveals the condition and depth of the roots in our life. The fruit of peace, the fruit of kindness, the fruit of courage, the fruit of commitment, the fruit of covenant. Like a good doctor doesn't just treat the outward symptoms, but is looking for the root, right? What's causing that, you know, third arm coming out of your whatever? What's the what's the root of that thing, right? I mean, that's what they're looking for. We can be rooted in the past, we can be rooted in tradition, we can be rooted in sin. The roots of bitterness that defile many. There's roots of anger, there's roots of envy, there's roots of selfishness, there's roots of confusion. The shepherd's tree, it's a real name, is a tree native to the Kalahari Desert has the deepest documented roots more than 230 feet deep. You know how they discovered it? Well diggers diggers discovered it. 230 feet deep. We're people of roots. Either good or bad. Shallow or deep. That's why we need and find and plant our roots in Christ. Christ. And the one who trusts in the Lord is like a tree planted by the water. Jesus said this in John 15. You all with me? John 15, 5, 8. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he, it is he that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he's thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me... And my words in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. But this, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. I would that you would bear much fruit. That's the heart of God. That's the heart of Jesus. I would that you would bear much fruit. There's not anybody that plants a fruit tree and is grateful when it doesn't produce something. Right? We got this like, I don't know what kind of thing it is. It's a tree on our, the corner of our house. And we think it's a cherry. We thought it was a cherry tree for years. But it never produced anything. We even went down to the local nursery and we said, what does this look like? It looks like a cherry tree. But it's not produced. Well, maybe, it's, a, maybe it's, a, it's not self-pollinating. Wow, so we just got something that would pollinate. The thing still doesn't produce anything. It looks like a cherry tree, y'all. I grew up on a cherry orchard. Looks like a Lambert cherry tree, but it doesn't produce anything. You're going to know by the fruit. So I know it's not a cherry tree because it's not producing anything. See, you can't effectively bear much fruit with a shallow root system. So here's my first takeaway this morning. Root systems are built in community. Root systems are built in community, both good and bad. Both good and bad. Listen, someone said, show me your five closest friends and I will show you your future. And they were absolutely true. I had a root system early on that was not good. It was shallow. It was rooted in the world. It was was blown about by the culture. It was not rooted in Jesus. And I kept tripping up and tripping everybody around me. God had to strip me of some old root systems. Some old mindsets. I had to repent of some old root systems and I needed healing and even deliverance from some old root damage. There's something called root rot and it's, it's, it's a real thing. It's root rot. It's kind of interesting. Smithsonian science study found this. 
The trees of same species are communal and form alliances. This is weird, man, because you're thinking about trees, you know, but they form alliances with other species, other species to share nutrients. That's crazy. And, and here's the other thing, too, is that they found that trees also send distress signals about drought or disease and actually alter their behavior based on that. How do they do that? It's called a mycorrhizal network. Mycorrhizal network. Isn't that crazy? Isn't God just amazing in how He makes creation? Where stuff like this is like, a tree is a tree is a tree. No, it's not a tree. It is a tree. But it's, God, it's made. It's fearfully and wonderfully made. This is, this is, this is amazing. See, I find that being around dreamers encourages you to dream. Talk about networking together and being around builders encourages you to build. Being around worshipers encourages worship. Overcomers encourage you to overcome. I mean, what happens when you see somebody overcomes? It actually encourages you to overcome. What happens when you see somebody get healed? It encourages you to step forward and go, okay, I want to walk in some healing, right? So, so there's this community, it's building community. Healthy people encourage you to be healthy. You know what I'm saying? You hang around with somebody that all they their, their, their diet is like McDonald's french fries, and guess what? You're going to be eating McDonald's french fries. I'll be honest with you, I love them. They're the best. But I have to stay away from them. You know what I'm saying? Unless I take my grandson fishing, and then his favorite thing is like, we go to McDonald's and Papa buys him you know, chicken nuggets and some french fries. And then he still doesn't want to share his french fries with me all the time. I call it a Papa Tax. You guys do that? Papa Tax. No, it's kind of funny because we're, we're like this with the Lord too. You know, it's like, okay, you know, you, you're giving, you're tithing. It's like, well, wait a minute. He says, I don't want to give a french fry. Do you realize I could bury you with french fries? I have enough money. I could buy every french fry in this thing and just bury you with it. So just give me... Give me one out of your ten, okay? <laughs> Being around healthy married people will encourage you to be a healthy married person. You hang around with people that their marriage is fractured, guess what? It, it, if you don't change that atmosphere, it can change your atmosphere. I don't like to hang around with guys like talking about, now, lady complaining about their spouse all the time. No, man, i got to be around healthy people. I want to be healthy. You're around healthy. I mean, think about this, you know. You get around somebody that they're, you know, they're, they're, they're eating right, and they're in the gym, and you're like, I want to eat right. I want to get in the gym. Right? I mean, it, it encourages you. What community are you in? Being around people with faith causes faith to rise. Being around Jesus lovers consistently will help you build deep roots. This is what it's all about. Jeremiah 17, 8 says, He is like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots. Now think about the sends out its roots and does not fear when heat comes. You know why? Because those roots that are get sent out are entwined in God and they're connected to community and we're doing this stuff together. We're having life together. This is, this is the beauty of it. This is a picture of deciding to be in community right there, sending out roots by the stream. Speaks of those times when community needs the strong and deep roots that have developed in you. Conversely, critics encourage you to criticize. Complainers makes you want to complain. Man, complaining is just an art. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I'm listening to you know, talk shows every once in a while. I'm like, God, these guys are getting paid way, way more money than me for just complaining. <laughs> Nobody's paying me for my opinion. Oh my goodness. Second takeaway. Root systems take investment. They're built in community. They take investment. A good garden, lawn, trees need healthy root systems. And fertilizer is crucial to the process. How many of you fertilized 
This just recently, yeah, you're supposed to do it like the three major holidays. I was like late, you know, September, you know, Labor Day was a little late, but I told Robbie, I got to go down, I got to get some triple 16, I got to, I, you know, I got to get some stuff on the lawn, and so I did it, and I felt so good about it, because like, I just put stuff on my lawn, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to pay off next year. I told the story a couple weeks ago, but not all of you were here about growing up, and my mom had these huge strawberries, huge how big were they, Pastor Jeff? They were huge. <laughs> and I remember that one of the things that we did faithfully was when you know, we get the truck and we go to somebody that had a horse and we just load up the horse manure and put them on the strawberries. I'm thinking, sometimes it's the poop that you encounter in life that actually produces fruit. <laughs> Think about it. Is that weird? And honestly, sometimes in community, there's a lot of manure that you have to endure that produces deep roots and fruit. It says in Proverbs 14, 4, where there are no oxen, the manger is empty. But the strength of an ox comes from abundant harvest. Listen, you've got, we think it, in community, it's going to be messy. There's just no doubt about it. If you come in here and you're a guest, we're just so grateful you're here and this is an amazing community, but it's not like everybody's got their mud all figured out. Sometimes there's going to be clean up an aisle five over there, right? Because somebody's kind of, you know, out of order doing something, whatever. Stop that, you know? That's just the way it is. People are messy. How many of you realize people are messy? You know, how many realize in the city? Okay, okay, think about this. In the city, Jerusalem, right? You know, they had all these gates, the fish gate, the sheep gate. They had the refuse gate. Because there's a lot of manure that needs to basically in the community that you got to deal with. But root systems, come on. We invest. We invest in what we think is important. Health supplements are a billion dollar a year industry. And honestly, some of the claims are pretty suspect. You know? I drink this, guess what? You're going to get a lot of hair on your head. Right? I mean, it's amazing. Now, I, I think there's, there's some, some good supplements. If you want to know about good supplements, just go out. It's Dr. Beth. She'll tell you the good ones. She'll also tell you the bad ones. She's very opinionated, but it's It's okay. But what we're, what we're investing in, what, what, what are we investing in to be rooted, to be planted in a healthy kingdom culture? What are we doing to create healthy root systems? I love what Pastor Joel said last week, you must be present to win. There's something that is so amazing when God brings His people together. Root systems are essential in taking nourishment. Okay, let's get down to the basics. What are you... Where are you taking your nourishment from? Where is your root system established? What information are you plugged into? Well, I got my roots into CNN or Fox News Network, right? I mean, think about where are you plugged into? You know, uh, you know if, what, is it the country station that you're tuned into all the time, nourishing you with the tears of my beer? Who stole my truck? And if I die before I wake, feed Jake? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, you like that song, huh? <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I, I've got to be super careful because I realize, man, my, my eye gate and my ear gate, that's my information intake. What am I doing? Where am I taking nourishment from? My next takeaway. Root systems are built in secret places. They're built in community, but they're also built in secret places. Ian Bounds wrote this, the man, God's man, is made in the closet. He's not made in the platform. He's made in the closet. His life and profound convictions were born in this secret communion with God. Can I just say this? Embrace being hidden. Love the cave. 
You have to love the cave and you have to allow the Lord to elevate you out of it. Learn to love your prayer closet. Because essentially that's what's happening. Being rooted in Jesus will cause you to be bigger on the inside than the outside. This is so important. I'm going to say this. Root systems are built in prayer. I'm going to tell you a story. In his book, The Vision and the Vow, there's this Peter uh, Grage, he tells of how this this, this distinguished art critic was studying uh, a painting by the Italian Renaissance master, Filippino Lippi. And so this guy stands, he he, he stood in, in, in London's National Gallery gazing at the 15th century depiction of, 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 of Mary holding the infant Jesus um, on her lap and, and, and they had the saints Dominique and, and Jerome kneeling nearby. But the painting troubled him because when you looked at the painting, it's like things weren't like, this was like a famous, famous, famous artist. And yet something just seemed to be out of proportion. You know, the mountains and stuff were just like, wow, this is weird. And, and art critics for years had been said, yeah, this guy's awesome, except for this one painting. This one painting just doesn't feel right. Did somebody else paint it? Did he really paint it? What was going on? I mean, the color was right, the composition was right, but the proportions were kind of slightly off. The, the, the two kneeling saints by Mary looked uncomfortable and awkward. It's like, what is happening with this thing? So there's an art critic named Robert Cumming coming. He wasn't the first to criticize Lippi's work for its poor perspective, but it says that he may be well the last to do so because at that moment he had a revelation. It suddenly occurred to him that the problem might be this. The painting had never been intended to come anywhere near a gallery. Lippi's painting had been commissioned to hang in a place of prayer. So this critic dropped to his knees in the public gallery before the painting. And he suddenly, he suddenly saw what generations of art critics had missed. From his new vantage point, he found himself gazing up at a perfectly proportioned piece. The foreground had moved naturally to the background while the saints seemed settled their awkwardness like the painting itself having turned to grace. Now Mary looked intently and kindly at him as he knelt at her feet between the, 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 the two saints and it was not the perspective of the painting that had been wrong all of these years. It was the perspective of the people looking at it. This painting was designed to be looked at in a posture of prayer. It was never designed to hang in a gallery, but into a place of prayer. Your root system will be developed in prayer. You know, there might be some people here this morning that you've basically been kind of relying on the network and the nourishment from somebody else's root system, but you've got to develop your own root system that will begin to be planted. You know, in a way that there's a, there's a stream and you can withstand the fire and the storms and the criticism and the culture. And it's a totally different thing because it's like, it's like something here it brings me to my last point. You've got to be rooted in Christ. John 15, 8, or John 15, 5 through 8, I am the vine once again and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, and it's he that bears much fruit from apart from me, you can do nothing. I know we read that at the beginning, but that's worth looking at that again. If anyone doesn't abide in me, he's thrown away like a branch. And can I say this, church? You were chosen. You were chosen. John 15, 16, Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you 
that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, He may give it to you. Pastor John and Kathy, Alaska is known for a lot of things, outdoor, fish, fish, huh? Not so much for fruit. You don't think of Alaska and you think huge potatoes, even though it's probably possible. But it just, it, it feels like the Spirit of God is dropping something in me to encourage you that as you abide in Him, there is going to be such a unique fruit, even a fruit outside of what you were expecting. I mean, because you've, you've had deep roots, and, and so you know what it's like to bear much fruit. I mean, that's not strange to you. You preach this. You believe this. You see this. But it's almost like God is creating a tree that's very unique. He's taking you from one plant, and He's transplanted. It's, it's almost like back in the day, there's these you know, where they would cross-pollinate and they would graft. They would graft trees. I mean, back in, you know, when I was growing up in an orchard industry, they would graft one species to another and they come up with something totally different, unique, blessed. There's a grafting that's happening. Uh, it, it, it's, not, it's not an easy process. I know this because we've talked, but I just feel in the Holy Spirit to encourage you both that in that grafting, the fruit that you're going to see is far... Uh, above and beyond anything you can ask or imagine, it's going to be worth the cut. There's a cut. There's a couple cuts that have to happen when you graft, and then there's a binding up, and there's been some cutting, but it's going to be worth the cut because the fruit is going to be amazing, brother. It's going to be amazing. We just pray for Pastor John and Kathy right now in North Kenai Chapel in the name of Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing up there. But Jesus said this. He said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go bear fruit, that your fruit would abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. A while back, Robbie and I went to a nursery to pick up a couple fruit trees. And it was a deliberate search. It was a deliberate search. We were going, Jesus has chosen you. And this morning you have a choice. The most important step is to be rooted in Christ. Will you cultivate kingdom roots? Or will you be shallow? I'm just being honest. I'm being, I'm just, man, as a good shepherd, I'm just going to say it the way it is. Let me have you just bow your heads just for a moment. Jesus, just help me. If you're here this morning and maybe you're a guest or maybe you've been coming for a long time but you've never taken that step to say, today I, I, I make a confession and a profession and a belief and faith in Jesus. And I proclaim and declare that He's the Lord of my life. You've never done that. But maybe today is the day to do that. That is the step of being rooted in Jesus. And if that's you this morning, I want to partner with you in that decision. I want you to just raise your hand just wave at me so I can just say, hey, you know, you, I'm seeing this with you. Today's the day. Yes, sir. Anybody else today? You're just saying, today I've become rooted in Christ by believing in Jesus. 